There's a lot of information out there on the correct engine height for V-type hulls. There isn't much with regards to a catamaran style hull. I was getting a lot of splashback from the engine leg. This was creating drag. I want the boat to be the best it can, so after researching the issue, there seemed to be three main things to try that would help. First would be to range, raise the engine height, the second would be to add a perma trim, and the third would be to have some cupping added to the propeller. Just thought I'd do a quick video of the transom riser I've made. I've tried it a couple of times by putting a small bit of wood between the engine mount and the top of the transom to raise the engine up, but could never raise it enough as I ran out of transom height. So I've got a, a length of mahogany, which I've painted grey, bolted to the top of the transom. Stainless steel plate, again bent over the transom shape, bolted through with stainless steel bolts, nylocks and washers. And I've also, because I trail the boat and don't rarely inflate and deflate, I've bolted the engine to the transom as well. The mahogany wood I can use so I'd attach a Scotty rod holder like that and I could have one on either side just because I've got Scotty rod holders lying around from the kayak so I don't need to go buying any other kind of mountain system because I can just use these and also the DIY rocket launcher tubes that I made which I had clamped on they can now let's move around here they can now be screwed onto there through the wood and be a bit more permanent. So when I've raised the engine height before, I got an issue with ventilation and the prop. As it was close to the surface, it would lose grip and slip in the water. So I looked into that and I found out the way to alleviate it was to get some cupping added to the propeller. So you can just see on that trailing edge there, it is now cupped. You can see it in the light. So when the prop spins, it provides that bit extra grip and doesn't slip in the water. Well, that's the theory. I'll put a link in the description of the, the company I sent it off to. So last year I fitted a two-piece plastic hydrofoil. But this year I've made a trim plate, or perma trim as they're called. It's a sheet of aluminium. Which I got off eBay for I think it was £16.90 or something, free delivery. Again, I'll link that in the description. Spared it all up, attached it with stainless steel nuts, bolts, and washers. And that, with the raised transom height, the cupped prop, will hopefully make a big difference. So that's the transom riser all completed. Scotty mounts attached. The rocket launcher holders that I made, they're now attached to the wood. Launch wheels are back on with the transducer and the plate. I've still got the piece of clear perspex covering most of the quick drain on the transom and I'm kind of hoping with these modifications I'll be able to take it out there should hopefully be not as much splashback and I fitted an engine lock as well that extra bit of security not that I'm ever not with the boat but it does help cover for the insurance for the perma trim we made a cardboard template when we got it all right in the shape we wanted, we transferred it onto the aluminium plate and we cut, drilled and shaped the plate. I then roughed the surface up and added three coats of metal primer and then three coats of black top coat. Next thing we did was remove the plastic transom pads by drilling the rivets out. Then we got the stainless plate and the mahogany got in position over the transom, shaped it round, flattened the edges of the mahogany with a, with a router and sander so they were flat for the Scotty mounts and then got the plate to the right angle of the transom. After the bolts were placed through, we measured them, removed them and then cut them away from the boat so there wasn't any damage. After that I then sprayed up 
the stainless plate before reassembling the whole thing again. I saw a while back on one of the Facebook forums someone had spotted these in Lidl. I can't remember who it was, so thank you for the post. I grabbed a couple, I think it was 2 99 inch. And I've velcroed them to the seat so they can be taken off, put away if I don't use them. And they should be quite comfy to sit on. <laughs> 